If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. So today, right, you know, we start off and, and we get into questions and Sal wants, he gets to the third rail question that we answered today <laughs> and he dishes off the oh answer Lord. right away. To, I'm looking over at Justin, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I ain't starting on this I'm one. I'm like, <laughs> oh, where do we go with this? Thanks for that <laughs> well, awkward ball you just threw. Right. So in this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 44 minutes, we do our intro uh, current events conversation First off, we talk about Led Zeppelin, the greatest rock band of all time, Adam, and <laughs> bands yeah. that have changed the huh, music game. Huh, huh. We talk about uh, my carnivore diet and after the- <laughs> bath. Yeah. Uh, uh, whoops. Your carnivore explosion. It was a greasy blowout. Uh, then we talk about Trump's food box and the welfare third rail. That's what Adam was referring to. We yeah. offend some people. Uh, maybe yeah. we answer some questions find out we'll see how that goes and we talk about the role of government in charity and then we also talk about my how i use organifi gold juice to fix my tummy Hmm. i also use the turmeric capsule uh, capsules that you can get from organifi if you combine gold juice with turmeric you'll get a very potent natural anti-inflammatory effect and they're both very effective for promoting positive gut health now, we are sponsored by Organifi, so if you want to buy their products, you can get a discount. All you got to do is go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP without a space, and you'll get a discount. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, this individual is a medical student, six hours of lectures every single day, studies for four to five hours every night. They're obviously sedentary because of this workload, and they know it's bad for the health. health excuse me. What can they do? What can they do for activity? What can they do to improve their health? We give some really good, solid tips in this episode. The next question was, this individual wants to know if bar classes, yoga classes, Pilates classes can replace mobility or trigger sessions. If you have MAPS performance or MAPS anabolic, you'll know what those sessions are. Can you replace them with classes like that? Um, It's a good question. Hmm. I've actually had that asked quite a bit. Find out the answer in this episode. The next question was, would we rather be extremely out of shape aesthetically, but really healthy, or really good looking and aesthetic, but always getting sick with poor energy, etc., for the rest of our lives? If we had to trade one for the other, which one would we pick? And is that even a question you can possibly ask? Yeah. Can that even exist? healthy... Do I not look good? Exactly. Hmm. And the final question is, do we think that in the fitness, nutrition, wellness world, there's a lack of independent thinking? Is it just a bunch of copycats and parroters? Or are people actually putting things together? Uh, the answers may surprise you with a little bit of debate, a little bit of discussion. <laughs> is parroter a word? Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to follow your, your <laughs> yeah. speaking from the future. We're gonna have like a whole, you know, like a thesaurus. Dictionary, yeah. yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, so electronical parators. Electronical parators. <laughs> also, hey, guess what? From the library. Guess what? What what? The most effective fat burning maps program has been created. Hit it with me, hit Holy it. Holy shit. And has been launched. It's hit. Listen, if your goal is I want to burn body fat. I want to burn it as fast as possible. And I want conditioning, which is everybody. In the shortest amount of time. I see all of your freaking messages. Okay. Fine. That's what you want. All right, all you addicts. That's what you want. That's what we're going to give you. We made MAPS HIT, high intensity interval training. This is a MAPS program that does HIT the right way, programmed properly so that you don't hammer your metabolism. Make sure you read the warning when you open it. That's right. Uh, You should have a decent level of fitness before. You do this program. We recommend you do another MAPS program before this one. But if you're brave and you think you're pretty fit and you want to burn a lot of body fat, go ahead and enroll. Now, check this out. We give you a code at the end of this episode that will give you $20 off and a free T-shirt. So make sure you listen till the end. The program is available right now on sale at mindpumpmedia.com. You're going to like this one. Oh, God. That's it. That never gets old right there. Never. That's my favorite. That's my favorite Zeppelin song. Oh, it's one of my favorites too. That that is my favorite one though. Yeah. Which one's your favorite? Is that one your number um, one? Um, no. I, I, I really like the Im- immigrant song. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Such a good one. That one's a good. What about one. you, Adam? Do you have a favorite Zeppelin song? Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big Zeppelin fan, dude. To be honest Whoa. with you. Whoa. I mean, I, no, that being said, like <sighs> wow. I like I like Led Zeppelin. But edit that out, Doug. We don't want anybody yeah. to know that. No, no. I mean, I just I, felt a. You know, it's just a uh, big queef. If I'm if I'm being honest, they're <laughs> they're after our time. So it's not a band before that, our time. Yeah, but yeah. what I say as I say after, after sorry yeah. before our time. It's, so it's not a it's not a band that we I grew up on. So I didn't grow up on on listening to them. It's more my dad's generation. Yeah. Now I got it as I got into classic rock. I absolutely listened. I owned the Led Zeppelin CDs for sure. But I wasn't listening to Led Zeppelin on a track, and I wasn't listening to Led Zeppelin on on cassette. So I can't claim to be like a huge. fan. I listened to Zeppelin uh, in high school. All the time. Yeah. So I listen to that more. Was my first introduction to Metallica to metal. and ACDC. I listen to more than anything. Well, else ACDC my... goes back quite a bit. I right. mean, they're, they're also they also played stuff that was and they also still closer. T- they to also her. still tour. Yeah, I mean, I've seen do. ACDC yeah. twice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they're a, they're a band that I've seen. I've seen. I and I I, I like. ACDC and I like Metallica better than I like Led Zeppelin and wow. and a lot of people. I that, mean, those are both great yeah, bands. Don't get me wrong. And and a lot of people that I put them all in kind of equal. Status. But you can't. Mm, Zeppelin, it's just Zeppelin. different. Ze- Zeppelin is just such a pioneer. They're you know, they're they're so like um, iconic. Bro, know? do you if you if you listen to just the all Led Zeppelin songs, you'll be listening for hours and you'll continuously listen to music that is massive. That is just. You know what I mean, like the Beatles, feel, like hit like, after hit. I feel you know like I mean? Led Ze- yeah. like Rage Against the Machine is of is our generation's Led Zeppelin. That's how I feel. Mm. When you think of the the level of intelligence behind the writing of what they were putting out, how groundbreaking and different the music they were putting out, I think that. I mean, my personal opinion, you know, I I, I love Rage Against the Machine, but they'll Rage never reached the level of. I mean, Zeppelin well, changed the culture. Period. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Like they changed. Like if you if you looked up uh, top ten uh, most uh, or top ten most rock and roll bands of all time or rock bands or well, well yeah Jimmy Page is one of the greatest guitar guitarists of all time yeah and it's just it I, what I think is like they had a different train of thought when they started writing the music it didn't sound like anything else that was out there that's the thing yeah it's hard to hear it <laughs> afterward because here's you know what I started doing when I was in so when I was in like, high dude, school he was playing the mandolin pro. What? When I was in high school, I started listening to because I never really connected to the music of our generation, except for like Rage Against the Machine and you know Metallica, a couple of things. Most of the popular music that was on the radio, I didn't connect to. Like I'd play and I'd be like, "This is all." Well, garbage. we grew up. We grew up in the generation of pop that didn't exist before us. Like pop didn't really exist before, dude. Pop wasn't like it was. It be, the pop MTV music, changed everything. Yeah, MTV oh, yeah. in the early '80s completely changed music and how we listen to music. Dude, you, do you know how many artists wouldn't even have become famous if it wasn't for MTV? Right. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm going to piss off some people. I guarantee it. But and and this individual is extremely talented. Don't get me wrong, but there's no way in hell Madonna would have done anything. No, even remotely as successful as she did if it wasn't for MTV. Oh because wow, you are gonna piss it because I, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough she, one right because there. she's got. Who she was, was first? Was it her or Cindy Lauper? Because Cindy Lauper is another one. Like these are she was yeah. These I, are artists that when MTV came out. Yeah, but what Madonna did first, bro, was pretty. F- I don't know. Oh yeah, no, no, no doubt. Yeah, that's, that's a well, no it's, doubt. It's because baking. of the visual though, she yes. had like all of that together to where yep. like when she'd tour and stuff, it was like. All the girls were dressing like her. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I'm not arguing that it. She. It was not accelerated because of MTV for sure. It was. She is. She was. She brought on that. That first like visual. Yeah. You know, like no one cared. No one's. No one cared what sexy Led Zeppelin did on stage. Like no one's talking about that. You got to. You know, a lot about success. You have to have talent, but then timing, right? So. Think about it this way: Would Joe Rogan be as big as he is if he did? If this was the '50s and he could only get on radio, probably not. It was podcasting that he was perfect for. Yeah, Madonna well, censorship back then was everything. That's right. Madonna and a lot of these artists got big because they existed in an era where, you know, MTV made the visual as important as the audio. Before that, the yeah. visual. Wasn't nearly as important at no, all. It didn't matter at all. Not at all. Like like the Ramones. Let me put it this way: Would the Ramones have gotten famous in the MTV era? No way. It's like three ugly fucking dudes. Like no, <laughs> they have no like appeal in that sense. Yeah. But their music was kind of different. <laughs> there, so it's very very different. But when I listen to old classic, when I listen to classic rock or old music, older music, I like to try to place myself. Like in the in that era, like listening to it for the first time. For example, Jimi Hendrix. 
Jimi Hendrix, if you listen to Hendrix today, if I show a kid today, they're gonna be like, wow, this is really good music. But it's even more than that because if when Hendrix was doing shit with the guitar that he was doing, nobody done that before. Could you imagine hearing well, that so, shit for yeah, the first time? Yeah, but you also sound like an old barnacle who always references old classical stuff. Like we evolve in everything. We've evolved. We talk. We always oh, yeah. talk about how fitness has evolved and the evolution of all these things and how we compound things that we've learned from before. And so, you know, when when you guys get so <laughs> Bar- barnacle, yeah, you, <laughs> you, you sell. So you you <laughs> guys, we're word. teaching the kids history. Well, and and I well, think it's going to be history I, twenty years from now. Don't too. get me wrong. I think that there's a lot to to get from. That. And I, I like classic rock too, but I also listen to a lot of music today. Like I think there's a lot to take from that too. And I think what happens to a lot of people is they get older because you don't have the same passion for music as you have when you're a kid. When you're a kid, at least I, I don't know you guys, but I was heavy into music. Oh yeah, this is and life. I watched MTV every single day. I was downloading. I knew what every every band that I liked that I listened to, I knew when their their next album released and what it was going to be like and the teaser that got re- released before. And I'd be the first one to listen to it and critique it with my buddies. Like, I just don't have that same kind of time that I apply to music today, but there's a lot of great music that still is made today. And I think that when we always reference back these old things, we look and sound fucking like a bunch of old guys well, no, what I think that what, don't pay I, attention to I, what's I, going on today. No, I think what happens is the past is always romanticized because of you course. have a different, you've got a broader context, you have uh, hindsight. So 20 years from now, there's going to be music that's made today that people can look back yeah. and they can see really the impact that it's had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Well, when- I think, I think too, if we, why we're talking about Led Zeppelin is because that was like a period in time where like music changed, right? So like they yeah. did something completely different to, yep. to shake up the entire music industry. And there's been moments like that where I was just watching the history of uh, hip hop and, you know, how like the evolution of like how they started with the turntables and they they took beats like they take one beat from this funk song and then they'd loop it and so they loop it and then they, they created this dance party and this dance party were like they they figured out that like when it would hit the hardest on that one beat they could keep that beat going and everybody was like mm-hmm. stoked and so then they went from there to then learning you know how to how to scratch and then it like progressed into this this what we hear today and then somebody rapped on top of it and but like this has happened so I'm always looking for that next kind of new sound yeah and it's, I, it, I'm, we, I'm looking for we, I know EDM sort of like made that and then mm-hmm. like um you know like you hear some rap change but I haven't really heard a lot of evolution in the rock front in a long time I think they're, gonna they're, come they're back. regressing I think it's going to come back I think it'll because we went electronic you know, really hard you know what rock is doing back. really big different right, right right now there's a lot of collaboration between rock and country right now oh really yes there's mm. that, which is a lot of there's a lot of pushback on that so if you're like a purist with country music, you fucking hate that new type of music. Mm. But if you look at there's a there's a there's a group or a genre of what do they call it? Are, con- they, are they calling it anything? Yeah, there's a name for it. I don't rock know. country. It, it's I mean that's what it is, right? It's it's you have rock stars that are yeah. that are singing country or country singers that are singing rock and then kind of the mesh of the two of them, real similar to how we saw rock and rap kind of collab. So you see a lot of collabs happening mm-hmm. right now and people huh. we saw a big change when we were kids. I mean Nirvana was is one of those bands. Nirvana oh, yeah. was they busted through and put it out there. Just like, oh, changed shit. Yeah, it just changed everything off. and so introduced again, the whole again, genre. Again what we sound like is a bunch of old guys because we talk about what we know because we were a part of what what you don't realize is it's, it's it reminds me when I get in arguments with friends that don't really understand sports the same way that I do because I been watching sports religiously since I was a kid. It's like arguing LeBron James and Michael Jordan. It's like Michael Jordan revolutionized the game of basketball. And even though LeBron James is more of a physical specimen, if you put them both on the court, LeBron James would gobble up Michael Jordan. Gobble him up because he's that much better than he is. But if it wasn't for Michael, LeBron may have never existed because that guy changed it, which is how you could argue Led Zeppelin and things like that. Yeah. Guys today, yeah. but there's there's people today that are doing unbelievable things. Sure, of course they're. We're not, yeah, unbelievable sure. I'm not, I'm not discounting that. I just haven't seen like... I'm not in the loop, obviously. Right. That's what, that's then, all I'm trying. I'm all I'm trying yeah, to say yeah. is that we're not in the fucking loop. One, <laughs> so. one thing I have seen though, like, um, and I know it's it's it hasn't taken off, but I really enjoyed it. They call it kind of like two step in, uh, like hardcore, which is like you know within the metal genre. There's like been a lot of different directions with that. There's like a real jazz focused kind of like um, metal, which is really hard to listen to, but it's so technical. It's like very impressive to watch. 
But um, yeah, this two step, it, it's like it reminds me of you guys ever listen to Rockabilly or any of that? Yeah, like, yeah, from yeah. Back the, so c- imagine that like combined with a heavier beat and a heavier like like raw like singing on top of it. Like every time I die, I think was one of the bands I listened mm-hmm. to that kind of was starting that direction. But yeah, like I'm looking more. Uh, of course, like I, I, I'm more prone to rock, but I'm I'm totally open to like. Yeah, I think it's and- I think it's funny when people hate on certain things because I, I don't know. I just have such a different outlook in life, like not just music. I mean, sports, everything. I had this debate the other day with somebody about the whole Tom Brady thing and hoping they lose because they cheated and all kinds of shit. It's like, dude, I I love seeing greatness. I love hearing, like, I love all genres of music, too. Like, I can sit down and listen to something that is not, like, my typical song that I would play inside my car or maybe the stuff that I typically gravitate towards because somebody is fucking ridiculously talented. Right. Like, it could be something so out of my... Yeah, so out of my genre, but that I'm like, man, that guy or girl is fucking just... Here's the thing. When when you think of of music or movies or sports of the past, the, the reason why there's a difference between how they're perceived versus now... I think has less to do with not being plugged into the current <coughs> culture and more to do with you have time to see what the real impact is. So while Jordan was playing during that period, everybody was like, wow, this is the, one of the best players of all time. But you fast forward 20 or 30 years, and now you can see the impact that he had on the game, and then you can really look and appreciate you know, how, how great of a player it was. And that's the same thing with music. When you look back, when Zeppelin was playing – in the 70s, people all loved Zeppelin. They were very popular. They were the most popular band uh, at that time. So knowing that, don't you think it's naive of us to think that's not happening at this very moment? I don't right think now? anybody's thinking that that's not happening now. Yeah, I, no, I, of course. Not it, at all. I just, it's just well, different. You are, I would you like are, people to introduce You are when you it. make statements like the music's crap today. Like when you say things like that, which you've said before. Oh, that's just my own. No, that's just my own personal preference of, of liking music. But do I think music today is going to impact music of the future? Of course. It's all part of the process. But that's my own personal I, You know process. what I think is fucking rad and what has completely changed the game, and it's not a single person or type of music. It's the ability for a person on YouTube to become famous. And he, like, uh, that, I, that Saj, uh, yeah. uh, what's her name? I that remember I that, you that girl you introduced me yeah, to that she, was, like, her a one-man band. Right. She's from, like, Australia or something, right? Yeah. And she went viral on YouTube, and that's how I found her. Dude. I got to watch her live and stand, like, five feet from her and watch. This girl is Fucking, she's so talented. Oh, man. dude, so unbelievably talented. I mean, you want to, and she's changing the game. Okay. This wasn't okay. You want to talk about somebody? Then now there's some people that can do this. She, in my opinion, that she's the most talented person I've seen in person do this. She's a one a one man band or one woman band. Know, one woman band, I guess. And yeah. and she's playing like six different instruments that she puts all in a loop to make one sound. And it's and she just layers here, it like an it's onion. It's so it dope. With here's one so thing, sick. And, and that's boom, 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 boom. that's something yeah. that couldn't be done. 15 years ago that we're watching happen right now that's going to change how music's done. And for the then next there's day. also this. So YouTube has also done this. And I was at my my daughter's dance, right, this weekend, and they played this song and all the kids went fucking crazy. And if it wasn't for YouTube, there's no way in hell this piece of shit would ever get half a billion uh, listens or views on YouTube. Let's see if you guys know what this is. I, get, I doubt you know what it is, Adam, because you don't have kids. You might have heard it, Justin. I know Doug's heard this. Let's see if you if you recognize this. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've heard this. Yeah. So this is a fucking video with a guy singing about a pen and a, a yeah. and a pineapple. Pineapple pen. Yes. Yeah. And it's yeah, ha- his combined yeah. views on his videos are half a billion. Every fucking kid knows him. He it's bigger, just like the guacamole yeah, lady. You, well, it, uh, it's ridiculous, but it's a song, and yeah. everybody from here is he from somewhere it's like China, off, yeah, and Korea, did, or okay, he's from Japan, Japan. Okay, so he's from Japan. So okay, first of all, I bet you a majority of that was is, most of the people that viewed it are from Japan first, and now. You've got Dude, America, hopping massive, on. massive it's like in the, America. It's like the one guy who did the the what's it what's it called the fucking oh the uh, uh, what does a yes uh, fox say what no 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 the guy the that's guy, another one that's right? another one that's another one the first one to really the first really the first like you talking about the black dude with the keyboard. 
Where he's like, he's got the really no, low voice. No, he's not a black guy. He's like oh. a Gangnam style. Yes, oh, Gangnam thank style. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, Gangnam style. Yeah, that was something that went viral over there first, and it made its way over here, and it's just- So it's this just, is all- trying to recreate that, too. Like, it's interesting, because like it's such a massive- So when you, so it, when you read- It's impossible to recreate when you, it. When you read the book Hitmakers, they, yeah. they break this fucking down, and it's been happening- They have since, that song in that book? It's, it, no, they don't, but it, uh-huh. they, they break down the formula of why that goes viral, and they break it down all the way back to music in the 20s yeah. that people now people maybe didn't understand the science of it back then and they were just kind of figuring it out but we we now and that's another thing that's different about now than then is we understand the science yeah, of it. There's you, a formula you made a point justin right now that we understand now we understand that we could put a beat we could put this beat and this beat together and that causes something to happen in people's bodies yeah. physically yeah does something so when kids hear that it is doing something that's the reason why it went viral it didn't go viral because it's shitty it yeah. went viral because somebody actually oh no no it went put viral a very a very it went brilliant, viral brilliant formula mental it notes is, and then the, and then they recreate it people build off of other people's yes. discoveries but it, yeah. it, it went viral and it is shitty that's all i meant not, <laughs> not because because it is clearly again, again that's what we think but uh, yeah. you know obviously a uh, half a billion people disagree with oh, you, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know i feel like uh, at least half of those people are listening to it because it's ridiculous but it's interesting like so when i was referencing like going back and regressing so you see bands like um uh, the white stripes and you see bands like the you know uh the black keys and, and, and people like that that you know have emerged because it's like we've heard like the evolution of like where you can go electronically almost you know to where let's get back to like um you know really raw sound like sounds that's like not overly produced, right? And, and like rocks and sticks. Yeah, well, honestly, <laughs> well, dude, people I, I, are going in that there, direction. There, there will always be a counter, right? So I think that as as you get as, as time evolves, there's going to be people like ourselves that don't evolve on all the music and get stuck to what we really like and what we recognize and what's comfortable to us. And there's smart people that know that and yeah. will create that because let's be honest. The, probably the best buying generation is the 35 to 45 mix. That's when you make good yeah. money. But you haven't evolved your ear to listening because you don't give a shit about that type of stuff anymore. You still like your old stuff. So if I'm a smart band, I, I might create a sound that reminds you of your fucking childhood. Yeah. You know, Dude, that you appreciate. If I was any good, like I would start a band that, that did like old school rockabilly slash like rock and roll. Like that that era where it was just like, I don't know. I have this like like sentimental like feeling yeah, no, when I, saw I hear your that picture. kind of stuff. Yeah. I saw your picture when you're in the... Yeah, but <laughs> not, not that many people are into you it anymore, so it's like, you know, you definitely it's do. not popular. I, I don't know if it'll ever I come lo- back. I abs- just absolutely love music. I love all music. There's not a lot of music that I, I don't like. I think it's really... I think everybody... Uh, there's a talent, There's a talent, very, very talented person to get something from in almost every genre, and I can I could sit down and listen Music's to it. Music's just interesting the way it affects the brain. It, it uh, Right. It, if it really lights up the entire brain. It's universal across all cultures. And it's been with humans for as long as we have records. And I think it's now, very interesting. I think now we understand that more than we ever have. So you talk about the yeah. generation now compared to our generation, who was just kind of rocking to new revolutionary music that we don't know why. The audience now is is. You underst- just wait till AI can fucking figure out the right, right combination oh, of notes that gets people excited, and all music will be produced by this guaranteed. We're close. I hit, you know? I feel like we're close. Playing man. the brown note. Yeah. <laughs> the what? Shits. But you ever heard about that? No. What is that? Oh, it's this bass. Uh, this I don't know if this is a hypothetical brown, thing, but what's it's, it called? We call it the brown note. It's like it gets low enough in in the the uh, it shakes uh, your bowels in the bass where it's supposedly it causes Dude, some people to shit their pants. Speaking of which. So I fucking pushed it way too hard. Yeah, what? Time. Push the fast or push what you ate? No, afterwards? dude. So I did my fast and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to play this carnivore diet thing and, and see what happens. So I had no yeah. plant products whatsoever yesterday, but I pushed the food pushed intake the and the meat. Up, huh? Oh, dude. I had a pound of ground beef and egg yolks. I had a fucking ribeye the size of my head. I had, you know, b- drank a bunch of beef, uh, you know, uh, bone broth and. Did a bunch of stuff and just last night, dude. At I don't know what time it was one a.m. I wake up like out of my. You ever you ever get waking up out of your sleep because you almost shit yourself? Did that ever <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Did <laughs> ever happen? When you wake up, you're like, oh yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, wait a minute. And I'm like, maybe Bro, if you ever have to take a shit in the middle of the night, that's bad. Like yeah. that's. I feel like that's that's like not a good thing. Never. That's, that's it's quite never a good. Thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If you never, have to get up in the middle of the night and take a shit, never, anytime that's happened to me, it was like I was doing some bad eating, dude. Yeah, for there's, sure. There's oh. never a good shit when you're woken up with it. So no. I wake up and I do one of those like, okay, uh, maybe I can. 
That reminds me of a story. Maybe I can let out the gas. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can just let off a little pressure because yeah. I don't want to get up because I'm fucking sleepy. And uh, nope, that was a mistake. So Whoa. straight in the toilet. Was that like a shark mistake? <laughs> oh, no, I caught it. I caught it before that happened. <laughs> oh, man. I'm pretty fast. And uh, it was uh, it was uh, all bad. It was all bad. So this morning, I'm going to go very easy and see what happens. But if it continues on today, I'm going to have to end my carnivore diet experiment. No, not to gross everybody out, but I, I am wondering, like, because my concern of eating like that super high meat like that and no get backup is yeah the no lack of fiber so did you did you feel constipated also too or did it go out pretty fine no no it's actually the opposite of constipation <laughs> how, how was your experience yeah. i think yeah. i had you know what i think i had i actually think i might have pushed the fat intake too high mm. and that's what might have caused it because then for dinner i had this bro i had this ribeye that was this big mm. and then i had like sausage with it and then i'm drinking this beet this bone broth that when I put the bone broth in the fridge, because I had it in the fridge all God, day, right? after a fast too, what are Bro, you thinking? Oh I, yeah, I wasn't, obviously. I wasn't thinking. I was you so mad at like myself. perfect slide. I was supposed to work out this morning, and I was tired because I was shitting for 45 minutes in the middle of the night, so. Oh, my God. This reminds me. <laughs> right out the butt tube. That, Your son. That's, that's what my <laughs> son calls it. Like, <laughs> we're at dinner, <laughs> and he's just like, he's like, Dad, I got to poop out my butt tube. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fucking fell out of my chair, dude. I was dying. I was like, that's so accurate. How proud of your kid are you when, oh when my he God. comes up with shit like that? I'm like, that is so hilarious. Please keep using that. Isn't that great? <laughs> that term, oh. you know? Are right, you guys ready for some current Let's events? Let's do it. It's current events time. All right, uh, so uh, there's a big hubbub going on right now. I'm going to use old words today, like by that. the way. I like hubbub. You said hoodwinked? Hoodwinked. So yeah, that's, that's a good what I opened one. Up I said hubbub. Okay. So President Trump... Uh, wants to replace food stamps with food boxes. So what? Yeah. So instead of food stamps, what people are going to get now in the mail is a box of made in America food that includes non-perishable items. So it'll be like non-perishable milk, you know, peanut butter, orange juice, probably government cheese or whatever, <clears throat> instead of food stamps. And this is supposed to save. $129 billion over the next 10 years. What? And people are pissed, of course, of pissed course, off, right? Yeah. Because, it, you know, when you have a food stamp, you have more flexibility what you're going to buy. Oh, and dollar store sales, uh, excuse me, dollar store stocks plummeted after this news because so many people use food stamps at the dollar store. So, what do you guys think about that? Do you think it's oh a smart? Because he is going to save the money. Third rail dancer, aren't you? I know, you? I love it. He's the third rail dancer. It's current event, dude. For it's, money. It's, it's all in the news right now. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that that's a? Because I know what my opinion is on this, but he's trying to save money, and he's trying to do the whole American-made thing: eliminate food stamps, replace it with a box of food at your door. There's arguments on both sides. Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, I don't think you get to do that. I don't think you get to bring it up like that and then dish it off so one of us can get to... Oh, yeah, you want my opinion the, first? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah that's because, like... Oh, I'll tell you why. Because oh, that's a loaded uh, uh, complex. I'm not a good person to yeah. ask about welfare type well, stuff, dude. It's it is, like whatever we say is going to piss somebody off. Well, I, I can tell you what my opinion is yeah. on, on the whole thing. Cause I, know, I think I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to... So he cut taxes. He's trying to cut spending now. He's he's, he's uh, trying to bring bring back a lot of money to the budget. He's trying to cut, which they need to cut spending. That's the bottom line. Although, although I think that's not the smartest way to cut spending. I my personal opinion: if you really want to save money, and I know why he wouldn't do this because it would piss off his base of conservatives. But it would be which is hypo, which is hypocritical because it would save more money than anything he's saying. Is the problem with food stamps is. When you give people food stamps, you are limiting their options with money to Wait, food. What they could do with it. When you give people a box of food, you're limiting it even further. Mm -hmm. If you really want to save money on welfare, what you need to do is look at the cost of administering all this welfare services. And I'm talking about all of it. Like, count all of it. There's child care services. There's food stamp services. There's services that... They're just all these different types of services that are under welfare cost a lot of money. And part of the expense is the bureaucracy that we employ to mm -hmm. to manage it, distribute it, and to put it all together, which I think is a big fucking waste of money, is the bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Like, if we want to give people money, give them money. Mm -hmm. Send them a check. Figure out what all that welfare costs. Figure that out. 
cut the cost of bureaucracy and give a check to people and tell them because it's their responsibility. At the end of the day, I like the, the burden answer. of responsibility is on them. And are some people going to buy alcohol and drugs and cigarettes and stupid shit? Yes. yes. But I think some people are also going to take that cash mm -hmm. and invest it in education, child care, transportation. Well, that's what you hope. And, and then you're treating them like a human <clears throat> being. I just, that I has, that I, has decision making. Uh, uh, go ahead, Adam. I disagree. I don't. I don't think that would happen at all. Uh, I think that most. And you know, here I'm going to offend some people for sure. But before I offend everybody, let me let me back up first and tell people that I've lived off of welfare and food stamps when I was a kid, right? So we've we've been through that. But and and this, I'm just not. I'm not a fan of how our whole welfare system is set up. Period. I think it promotes uh, bad habits. I think it promotes people. Uh, milking the system. I think it promotes people manipulating the system. And I think a majority, not all, but a majority of the people that take it, uh, that use it, take advantage of it. And I, I think that really hurts us as a, co a collective, like all people that have to help provide taxes and pay for it. So I'm not a fan of it at all. Now, this is my personal experience because what I've seen around me, and this isn't just picking on my personal family. I know a lot of people that you know, here's the attitude they have. And I remember this conversation when I was a teenager with my mother and she was collecting welfare between jobs. And I remember thinking, mom, you're, you're, you are smart enough that you could walk into like a Starbucks and I know that they would give you a job and you could easily work up to be in management within a year. And yeah, it's not great money and yeah, this and that, but it's better than nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. And her logic behind not going to get a job was that the difference in money that she would make by going to work is so small that it doesn't make sense for her to go do that. So she would refuse to do that. That Now, that being said- Which is, which is logic. Right. That's logical, <clears throat> right? And so let's fast forward to some other things that I learned growing up as I got older. Uh, you know, my mom never got out of these bad habits because what happens with most people is it doesn't matter how much money they have. It's the habits that they've created. They don't know how to manage money correctly. So them making $20,000 in food and food stamps a year versus them all of a sudden getting a job for $75,000, you'll be surprised those same, that same person will be living paycheck to paycheck because they have poor habits. And I recognize this a lot too when I would provide money for my mom. I'd be like, you know, I'd say, hey mom, here's 500 bucks. You know, I know you need groceries. You need things like that. And then I remember coming back in my, my mid twenties, I'd come back to see her in town and she was out at the water park with my kid, my brothers and sisters and the kids' neighbors and the neighbor kids. And I'm like, wait a second, just like a month ago, you had to borrow $500 from me. And now you're going to the water park with the fucking neighbor kids. Like, yeah, I know that's only a few hundred bucks and you want to give your kids and I get it. I get what you want, but you don't have that luxury. You shouldn't do that. Those type of people tend to make those fucking decisions. At least every person I've ever met that's been that. Now, I know there's somebody listening right now that probably goes, hey, that really helped me. So mm -hmm. it got me from here to my next job and it saved my family. My so I'm sure there is a percentage of people out there. But I also believe those percentage of people probably have somebody like me or someone else in their life that would lend them a hand to help to get them up. And we're better off as humans, I think, mm -hmm using each other it's, like that so here's it's the same way i don't know kind of i look at at charities like um for me it's always like okay um i i contribute to the charities that that are more prone to helping initially and and getting like uh provisions and you know housing or things like that to promote um independence going forward and presentations of jobs and, and opportunities so it all leads to opportunity uh, you know, so it's like this, it, it, you know, as, as far as like welfare is concerned, it's the same thing. Like we want it to lead into then, uh, transitioning. Like, so we're not, we're not staying there in it's that, a, that position, look, look, especially if you're here, an able-bodied person. So here's the deal. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with, with a, a lot of what you're saying, Adam, but here's the, the reality. The reality is we have a large percentage of the population now that has been, that relies on and has been conditioned to be on uh, these programs and systems. And if we just take it away, what will end up happening is major, major civil unrest. I agree. And lots of problems. So with what I'm saying is I don't, I think here's the two things we need you to think look that at. Do you think that this is a step in that direction? I, so that's what I'm trying to say. So, so well, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, if, we that's, want, if that's your point that you're making with this, yes, I agree. Because yes, in, in my opinion, 
it's got to fucking go at one point because, in my yeah. opinion, it's a fucking crutch. Yeah. It's a crutch, and, and think of yourself He's right now. A For, forget the fact pro- that maybe nobody in this room has actually collected food stamps himself, other than myself as a child. Like as an yeah. adult, you've never done that. I know damn well about myself. Every day, even though I try, I say I give it a hundred percent. There's more inside of me because I tell you what: if I if I lost everything and I was on the street, you would see a whole other version of me. That because the survival mode, and we all have that animal instinct in us. I believe we all have that primal ability of if you were gonna fucking die and starve, you would figure something out. Well, here's and, and that's, you, if you if you have if you have something to catch you, and we've and we have we've made it so easy for people to do that. Like I watched my mom teach it to my sister. And now I see my sister going down the same path, and she right. teaches it to her. It's fucking well, insane. No, and it's, it's 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 an epidemic. It, 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 people get angry when they hear that, but that is a reality. There are of they course, are I'm incentives. Get hate over it. I know I will. No, it's listen. It's a reality. It does create an incentive to not work. It does create an incentive for people to not become more independent, and it places the burden on other people. Because the reality, the truth is. The tr- the only burden that someone has is to take care of themselves. That's the fact. Now, it's ideal in a society that people volunteer to help each other out. That's ideal. 100%. But the reality is that the burden uh, is on the individual to take care of themselves. Now, we do have a system where it's we have massive amounts of people that are reliant upon the system, generally, generationally have been on the system, and you can't just take it away because you would, you would it's like cutting off your nose to spite your face. It would it would cause way more problems that it would solve. So my what I what I'm saying is number one, let's look at the ultimate goal way down the line. The ultimate goal down the line is an entirely voluntary society, a society where people are not forced to do anything. That means includes not pay taxes. Everything's voluntary. People help themselves and help each other if they want to. And there's plenty of opportunities. But to get there, we have to go from where we're at now. To get there, and I think the I next got- step is not what Trump is saying, which is a box of food instead of fucking food stamps, because I think that's a stupid idea. I think cut the bureaucracy, because then you save money on yeah. top of it. You could say to your conservatives, because if I was a politician, I'd fucking <clears throat> I would sell this so well, I'd easily say, look, hey, I'd love to see it privatized. I would love to see. I I don't know. I have no that's problem. charity. I have, yeah, exactly. exactly. I have no problem giving that money. Uh, but I want to know where it's going. Like yeah. I have no. Let, let's let's say at the end of the year that I you know that I end up paying you know a total of twenty thousand dollars worth of taxes that will go to charitable things like welfare. Right. Let's say that I have no problem still paying that same amount. But then just give me the option to tell me or be able to say I want ten thousand to go here. I want two thousand to go here. One thousand to go here. And let all these different charities compete to come to people like us and explain like what they're doing, the movement, and let let us pick that. That would that would never and, they would never do that because it's, I know it's because it's because then it would fuck government. People People, don't, I understand people that. don't realize this. The amount of money that the government collects to to give out, quote unquote, to welfare recipients, a large percentage of that it's goes to bureaucracy. government. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. So it's like they're taking the money, they're keeping a lot of it, and then they're administering a little bit right. out to people in a very inefficient way. So like as, as I was saying, if I was a politician, I'd sell it to the conservatives by saying, hey, I'm saving X amount of hundreds of billions of dollars by reducing by shrinking government, which is what you want, cutting out bureaucracy, and then you liberals over here who love you know, giving people a bunch of stuff for free, I'm going to give them cash. Now they can spend it however they want, and they've got all that freedom, yeah. and now we've kind of made both people happy. And then what you do is you slowly eliminate the hmm. barriers to enter the market, which there are lots of barriers, by the way, lots of barriers for people who have low skills, Maybe have a prison sentence or two, or who don't don't have a lot of uh, uh, you know job experience. There's a lot of barriers. One of which is a minimum wage. You make a minimum wage fifteen dollars. Oh yeah. Anybody um, who has no skills or or that just that just that, that makes them unemployable. Oh, it makes it worse. Yeah. It makes it, imagine if you imagine if we didn't have a minimum wage, and then all of a sudden you and you didn't have. And I know you couldn't do that overnight. You're right. I agree with you. But imagine that, like that. Somebody, oh, I think you could eliminate. I can find a right job. Away. I can find a job here that I that's so basic and simple that we don't you know we don't really pay. But if I could pay someone four or five dollars an hour and they didn't have any money or any job why not if they agree to it and i agree to it more experience they can start charging more right so it has to start somewhere so milton Milton friedman talks about this uh he he calls it a negative income tax where some people pay taxes and then as you if you're other people actually collect money 
and then they can use that money to spend themselves, which eliminates bureaucracy, gives people freedom to become independent, and then the choice is up to them. Yeah. The choice then becomes up to them. And well, then- that's what I like. I, I don't like, you know, here's this money, but here's all these stipulations. Like, l- literally just give it. If they're going to fucking just blow it and, and, and get drugs or whatever, that's their, th- this is their life. You know, but if this is something that like, you know, that, that's where I think all these regulations that we're kind of putting in place with like, um, you know, here's here's this amount. And this is all you bottom get. line it is doesn't we're, trying, do a whole we're, lot. we're trying to control something we shouldn't even be trying to control. Right. That's the problem. You get well, treated as because, charity. Because here's the thing. The reason why it went that way, Justin, is because so many people did do that. They're abusers. Yes. Yeah, so many people. I know. If you just gave money. So many people might just go out and do drugs. So many people might go buy yeah. themselves a new pair of shoes instead of getting food on the table for their family. Like so many people will make irresponsible decisions like that. So then they put regulation in there, or, and yeah. you put these things, these systems in place where oh, let's give them a box or let's give them a stamp that they can only use at grocery stores. In reality, we have no business even trying to control that. Anyways. There's a huge. Well, this is there's a charity. Huge, what we're talking about yeah. is charity, and somehow we just put it all in the government's hands to like all of a sudden create this the system systematize it for it, us it, when we can yeah. just give it direct. And it actually takes the power away from the people to be able to solve these problems themselves because they are problems that people want to solve. But uh, when you give it to government to do, um, number again, number one, there's tons of corruption, tons of corruption in these systems. And a lot of people are like, well, they don't. It's no longer my problem. I pay my taxes. No imagine, imagine if you just every year you owe ten percent to whatever foundations or what every year that's your taxes. And they're the type of the com- com- conversations that would we'll be having like this, where it's just like, what? Oh, you haven't heard of this company that's doing this? And Dude, if I could choose ch- charities and stuff, right. taxes, fuck yeah. And imagine how people would 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 teach other people and help. Like, imagine I had like, let's say I have where the last five years there's three or four companies that are charities out there that are doing things that I believe in that are really going to change to impact the world for good and I'm kind of committed to that and then I meet Justin and Justin's like oh my god you haven't heard of this charity you know what they're doing like man you should put and then I then I have the option to give even more money towards something else I believe in or right. maybe par, maybe give less to something else I was giving money to and now that mm. like I think I really believe in humanity that we would we could figure this out yeah and I think as letting the- if we saw people destitute and you know hurting you you think that like people that actually have that the haves won't like contribute towards that? Right. Come on, man. You, you listen to this. Just so you guys, for people listening right now, they're like, oh no, that's not what it's like. Government's great, this and that. There are <laughs> Who says there that? a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people say government's great because we need it because their awesome. husband or wife works for no, it. No, <laughs> no. A lot of people say that. Let me give you an example. Okay, there are over thirty cities in America where it's illegal to feed the homeless. If you yourself, if you, if me, Adam what? and Justin, it's true. That's crazy. If me, Adam and Justin are like, you know what? We feel like giving, we want to help people. We see these homeless people over here under the underpass or whatever. You know what, guys? Let's go buy a bunch of pizzas. Let's set up a table and let's just feed the, and people used to do this quite a bit. People used to, I've actually contemplating doing this with my kids so that they can see what it's like to give food to people in themselves. You know what I mean? Get the, to, to actually see the person they're giving it to. There are over 30 cities in America where they've made that illegal. You can't do that. It has to be something that's licensed by the government or approved by the government. And if you as an individual cannot give, you know, set up tables. Here in America? In America. That's crazy. 100%. I did not know that. Yep. Over over 30 cities. This is true. You can look it up. Cool. I can't help. Any in California? Not Uh, in California. uh, uh, Actually, I believe so. I mean, I could look up and see. If I can find any. Wow. But, but, and so what's their thought? Is their thought oh, process? there's a lot in California. Chico, Costa Mesa, Hayward, Los Angeles, Malibu, Ocean Beach, Pasadena, Sacramento, San Diego, San Francisco. What? Santa Monica. Yep. Absolutely. They make it illegal to distribute food. Now, what is the logic the, behind that? Is there a thought I, you know, process to th- th- I, I don't know. Less, there'd be less bums, so let's not- do- I don't know, but I can guess that it's- Let me guess. I don't know what it is, so so this is me speculating, but I because I know government- enough to know how full of shit they can be that they probably say something like we need to check the food to see if it's safe uh it needs to follow certain nutrient requirements it's not labeled uh you know like bullshit you know arguments for the safety of people who are fucking like, hungry like, here here's my poison apple <laughs> no, no the, yeah. here, bro, are you serious here's the thing like they don't want to uh be out competed for helping people to be the one to help people you understand because yeah, they then can, you take they, their power right away. they control uh, it right now yeah so yeah. anyway uh yes. ridiculous but no i think what i think what trump is doing i know what he's trying to do he's trying to appeal to his base by saying 
these boxes contain foods that are non-perishable and all made in America. So now he's now he's like, oh, you know, that to the whole on that, yeah, yeah the, the whole nationalism, nationalism yeah, yeah thing. Yeah, big time. And I'm that. saving money, and there's that. And then the liberals are gonna be like, oh my god, that's terrible. What if people don't like the food, and then they're gonna come back and be like, well, you know, beggars can't be choosers, and let's go back and forth and. <laughs> Hilarious that, wow. that they're well, actually. Well, do you think that? Cause, uh, but I think it's a terrible. Fire. I think he's doing a uh, terrible. This is going to be uproar. For yeah, sure. it's it's stupid. I, I really think he's not. This is not a smart uh, way to cut costs of welfare. I don't think it's going to benefit too many people. I think what I'm what I would say is, I think would be you know much more intelligent. I couldn't um, imagine being the president right now with how how much fucked up shit that we have. Like. You, it's it would feel like you're almost always robbing Peter to pay Paul and everything that you do. It's you know it's it's crazy. You got you know the other yeah. thing that everybody is div- divided on with him is the you know the building the wall thing, right? Like building the wall up and keeping him out in. Like, but then you could argue, wouldn't it be smarter to let him in and just help make it easier for them to become a citizen? Now that now we collect tax money yeah, from them, so regu- wouldn't that be regulated? A, right? Wouldn't that be rules, a, a better yeah. strategy? But then you have to worry about okay, well wait a second. If we have this, if we're California is already a welfare state, and then all of a sudden we let th- make these people even easier to get. Uh, become a citizen, and then that much easier to get on welfare. So now that gets driven up because you've opened up the gates to come in. So what a fucking challenge that is. I mean, mm-hmm. that's. I mean, how do you handle that? How do you deal with that with that dichotomy? Right. That's so yeah. you have to. Oppo- you, you you have to you have to approach it very intelligently and know what your angles are. It's politics. That's why I can't stand it. That's why I would you love it. No, I, I can't. Stand this it. guy, I can't stand. Dives deep into it. it. What are you talking oh, no, about? I hate politicians. Oh, yeah. I oh, hate politicians. politicians. Oh, yeah. Politicians. Yeah. No, I can't stand politicians. And yeah, Trump's say not, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And Trump's not really a classic politician, you know. But he's he does know how to play politics better than politicians so far. He seems to be winning at that game. I just I hate the whole bullshit game. You know what I mean? I wish we could be straight. The only thing that excited me even yeah. about having Trump was I, I wanted to have somebody who I felt like. What? Because I feel like our company, our, our company, our, I feel like our, our, the United States needs like economic help more than anything else. So somebody who like understands business right. better than the well, person. We've been trying to be world police for for like forever. Right, and I and which, I feel like been tough. we've been going through a lot of politicians that are more into playing the politician game than actually getting shit done or changing things that need to be changed. Where. I do feel like Trump is shaking a lot of shit up. I know he's pissing a lot of people off, and and I don't know if I agree with a lot of things. But then I also don't know what he's trying to accomplish. What you're talking about right now, Sal, because maybe your maybe his ultimate vision is to head in a direction that we're talking about. But he knows also that you can't just all of a sudden cut that overnight because people will shit themselves. This is the transition. Here's, in that direction. here's what would happen if if he said, "I'm cutting a bunch of bureaucracy, uh, welfare bureaucracy, and giving people a check," like I said. What they'll do is they'll come back and they'll strike and say, he's cutting, you know, uh, 10,000 jobs. We're all losing our jobs because Trump doesn't like poor people. That's how they would spin it. Right. And that's why I hate the fucking game so much. Oh, wow. It's so, yeah. Because, oh, all, I lost, I used to, I worked for the government for 10 years and I was helping, up, you know, poor people. And then Trump cut my job and now I'm unemployed. And, you know, then they'll spin that around and say that he's cutting jobs, and, right, right. which is not, listen, a government job is not. A job. It's not, I'm sorry. It's just not. <laughs> Whoa. No, no. Hold on a second. It is. It is a. It is 100. Uh, percent It is does not create wealth. It is 100 percent taken from taxes and paid for. Some of them I can see being necessary, maybe, but a, but it's not a wealth creator. Versus you go work for a company that's on the private market. It is fully supported by people's voluntary money, and it, that means that has created value and wealth for people. If you cut all the government jobs, I think a lot of them would still exist. Like I think people would still want police and fire and I think they would still want education I think and stuff they'd like make that. More money. Probably. Yeah. I think teachers probably. and police teachers. and I probably. think yeah. I think a lot of those yeah. people would make more money probably if it was done that way. Officials. A lot of it gets eaten up on the way probably. over to them. I saw yeah. a po- I saw a post somebody made a, the other day where they were like uh how dare, you know, this uh CEO or something make this much money and teachers only make this much or you know, or this rapper make this much and this teacher make this much. This is not good. We need to change this. And I replied to this, it's a friend of mine who I don't know why we're still friends because I always hammer on them. <laughs> and I replied and I'm like, you know, I said, the teacher makes a certain amount because that's a reflection of the what the market is willing to pay that teacher for that job. And there's a rapper that, you know, that the market is willing to pay a certain amount. And I said, the reason why people don't like that is it's a reflection of us. It's a reflection of ourselves. Like when we look at right, that we care more about this the music. This guy's that's it. Producing if we right. want, look at bottom line is you want teachers to make more money, pay them more money. 
That's it. You want people that you want things to be paid to be worth more, then go spend more on them. But we don't, and so it's a reflection of us, and we don't like how ugly we are. Sometimes it goes back to that entitlement thing. That's we, it. <laughs> That's it. So, any do you have any more? Any more? No, I don't. I don't think we need to throw. I think any, we're good. I don't think we need to throw any. To I had something. I'll save it for tomorrow. The need gasoline on the yeah. fire. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think what oh, I'm gonna yeah. just to kind of lighten it up again. What I think I'm gonna do to see if it helps my stomach is I think I'm gonna have some of the the gold juice because. That seems to have positive effects on my gut mm. every time I use it. So, what do you think it is inside of it that's that's doing that? Turmeric, the turmeric, yeah, yeah. inflammatory. Yep. Uh, I think it's a, yeah. yep. I think it's a turmeric because turmeric has got really good uh, uh, beneficial effects on gut health and inflammation in the gut. And uh, I take turmeric for Morganify also because they do sell just straight turmeric and it's a really good quality one. But then that gold juice has got a lot of turmeric in it. But then it has other things in it that are anti-inflammatory. So I'm gonna start taking that, and it and tastes guys, good, and it, mm-hmm. it's really good. Yeah, it's, no, that's it's why t- it's uh, probably the tastiest. Kind of silly how honest. good it is. No, yeah. Yeah. bird. Today's quaz is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. First question is from Michael Salzel. I am a first year medical student, have six hours of lecture every weekday and study four to five hours every night. I find myself living a very sedentary lifestyle and know this could be bad for my long term health. What do you suggest I do? Ooh, this yeah. is a really good question because it hits home for me right now. Yeah, it's um, exercise can take an activity and diet can take on different different purposes and roles in your life. Sometimes, you know, you may be working out and eating because you're really pushing performance and you're really maximizing how strong you are, how fast you are, and you're just you're killing it in the gym. Other times. They may be tools to help you do the other things that may be a priority for you. Now, in this case, you know, you're a medical student, uh, first year. Now, that is a ridiculous workload. Uh, I've, I've worked with doctors, I've worked with medical students. I know how much work is involved, I know how much studying is involved, how hard it is to just even get a normal, you know, seven or eight hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. Let alone finding time to you work be out. On call. Yeah, it's just crazy. It can get really crazy, and so I think you know it would be unrealistic to think that you're going to work out for hardcore performance or aesthetic goals while you're doing this. But because your priority is to be a good, to be an effective student, to you know get good grades and get far so that you can graduate and you know do well, you need to use exercise and nutrition as tools to help you know promote and facilitate that because. Lack of activity and poor health. You got to ask yourself this. Which of these two options, which one is going to make me a better and more effective student and learn and, you know, be able to retain information? Being, you know, poor health and totally sedentary or better health with some activity? And the answer, the easy answer is some activity with better health. So you don't have to be crazy with your workouts, but maybe in between studying, you do 10 to 15 minutes of trigger sessions or push-ups or stretching or mobility. And maybe when you eat, you consciously make a choice to eat foods that you know are better for you because the, you know, 30 minutes a day or 25 minutes a day that you devote to doing these things isn't going to take away from your studying time. It's going to add to, because now, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when my health is good, my sleep is good. I can read and write and absorb information way faster. Like I can read a paper and absorb it. It's like lasting energy. It's just as as opposed to like quick bursts. Like you try and get caffeine or or like, you know, processed foods to comfort you through this process. And it gives you like an initial jolt of energy, but then you crash even harder, uh, you know, when that, when that goes through. So yeah, definitely any sort of activity. This is where it's like, you know, throughout your day, you just have to like, figure out 
a couple different moves that you can kind of go to like constantly like in between and, and this is one of those things that you're just going to kind of look at it as charging you up to keep you going and so i i would tend to do more like mobility moves you know throughout the day like sal said trigger sessions so we're getting like you know some blood pumping in there and getting your 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 muscle some activity so that way you know like it also helps you to think more sharply more clearly and that's going to be super important uh going through that process as a student so i have i have two bits of advice and i think what the boys gave is i think phenomenal advice also so maybe one of us will hit on something that you can actually apply to your life i think that um I have a lot of clients that have been that have been in this situation. I personally have been in a situation where I just don't have that kind of time. Things that I've seen that I've been very successful with is finding ways that I can get them to multitask and still do something that's active. For example, like I don't know if everything that you're consuming as far as your what you're learning is all having to sit down and read a textbook or if some of that is audio. Mm. Um, by being able to listen to something and learn and then walk at the same time, because uh, normally what happens is someone like this, they literally are only moving like a thousand to three thousand steps total in an entire day, which is less than you walking consistently for just a half hour. So that's crazy. So if you can take that person and you could literally triple their activity just by getting them to go for a walk for about an hour to 90 minutes every single day, even if that means you break it up in three 30 minute breaks or you can walk and multitask and answer phone calls or call people and do stuff or listen audio while you're also walking, I think that will be the biggest bang for your buck because the, you, people are blown away by how much that will make a difference. I'm watching right now, so I, I'm probably uh, inching up over probably 14% body fat. So I'm in some of the worst shape I've been in, in the last four years, and I, it's just because I can't move. I've reduced all the way down to one to two meals a day and all it takes is me to be off the diet a little bit, have some some sweets, or go to a fucking you know baby shower and drink some alcohol. And I I'm like adding a, a percent of body fat every time that happens. And it's just because I'm fucking sedentary. I haven't had a day where I've moved over two thousand steps because I've been in a boot for the last six weeks. So I'm watching the the body fat just compile on me, and it can get very overwhelming and depressing when that's happening to you. And where it's really depressing for me right now is I'm in a situation where I can't go walk. Like I wish I could at least just go move and walk because that would help me so much more. So that's my first piece of advice: is if you can find a way to to walk, you know, sixty to ninety minutes every single day, whether you break it up in in small little increments and breaks between your studying all all day and all night, or if you can multitask and be able to, you know, work on some things or learn while you're also walking, I think that would be a game changer. The other thing is, we just released Maps Hit, and Maps Hit is a fifteen, a twenty, and a twi- twenty five minute workout that you get as an option in there. And, you know, HIT hit is designed to burn the most amount of calories in the shortest amount of time. So if you're looking to get a good calorie burn while you're going through this process, this is a good alternative for you. Although we recommend that people don't follow a HIT program for longer than about six weeks, it is an alternative or something that you can incorporate. So maybe you don't do the hit all the time, but every once in a while you incorporate a hit and then other days you you walk. So maybe when you can get your 90 minute walk in for the day, you do it. But the days when you're for sure crunched for time and you only have 15 or 20 minutes, you implement hit. So that's my piece of advice that I think would, would work or help out someone in this yeah, situation. I just, I just think when you, you know, again, because I've worked with so many people in this situation, it's especially in, in medicine, they tend to be extremely driven. They tend to be extremely goal, goal oriented. Like we're not talking about lazy individuals. These are, uh, they're highly intelligent, cream of the crop, busted their ass. They got there for a reason. And so I've had so much success with having them look at their exercise as another tool to make them more effective at the, what, at what they're trying to do. And once I'm able to communicate that effectively, then they all, all of a sudden are able to make the time because now they view it as a performance, performance enhancer. Performance driven. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what they are. They're very performance driven like if they knew that it's hard to get that person jump started though because they're so overwhelmed with yeah, everything like yeah. that because it's hard for them to see that what oh you, no you, you gave you, very constructive it, advice yeah, it's all coming at them from different angles yeah no right. you gave very constructive advice because then the next conversation i'd have with them would be like okay fuck i want to do it now what do i do and then that's when i would have that conversation of listen to you maybe your lecture while you walk or every for every 30 minutes of or or 45 minutes of studying 
do five to 10 minutes of movement, mobility, or stretching so that, you know, every, you know, two right, or three right. hours, it's like 20 minutes of, of movement. And Study in the sun, go yep, out and read the book yep. outside. Like that'll be great for you too. Dude, I'm, I'm telling you. So, uh, when I was doing, when depressing. I was doing trigger depressing. sessions regularly, where I would do them three times a day, one side effect I found from a trigger session, which takes about eight minutes is it was more effective than a cup of coffee. Like I sometimes I'd be sitting there and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so lazy. I don't want to do an eight minute trigger session. But this was during the period of time where I'm testing the product out or the program out. It was before we launched, before I even finished putting Maps Anabolic together as a, a, a program you could buy online. And I'd be like, oh, I'm really tired. I don't want to do this. But I was testing the program. So I made myself get up. And I remember every single time afterwards, I was like, whoa, I feel way more energized. And I remember th- realizing like, this is a good tool that I can use when I'm trying to write or work, which I still do use to this day, till this day, uh, if I'm in a meeting and I find myself losing focus, I'll stand up and I'll sit in the back and I'll stretch or I'll move. Or if we're all creating a program together and we're all sitting around, sometimes I'll stand up and I'll stretch or I'll do some movement. And it's not because I'm bored. It's because it literally helps me focus. It's a, it's a really powerful well, also explain, performance enhancement explain, tool. Explain what's happening to us too, because- when we, when we are sedentary, where we've been sitting for hours, it's crazy how much you become in this sympathetic state where your heart rate starts to go really, really parasympathetic. Yeah, or paras- yeah. excuse me, parasympathetic, where your heart rate starts to slow down big time. You want to go to sleep. Yeah, and you, you go from somebody who probably averages like seventy beats all the way down to like fifty something because you're so slow. Then you're just getting up and doing literally like you're saying a little three minute to eight minute trigger session that accelerates that, and then it still takes another probably hour before you get back to where you just were. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna get all the added benefits of the calorie expenditure and your heart rate being elevated for that even that short little duration yep. for the next hour or two. So learning to interject those little eight, 10, 15 minutes. Here's another thing too that I've that I've learned. So I don't have a whole lot of formal education. I, I went to basically high school and a little bit tiny bit of college. Most of it's all learning on my own. And people have asked me, how do you study and retain some of the information that you read? I because I never really learned how to how to study. But I started to figure out what I do and one of the things that I do that's very effective that I'm now able to verbalize, and I've really only put this together relatively recently, is if I read something and I read something very impactful, I'll stop reading it. I'll do something else where I'm stretching or moving, or even if I'm not, even if I'm just sitting there, and I'll talk about it, even if I'm talking about t- to myself. So something you can do is if you're studying and you're reading something and you're like, I need to get up and move, stop what you're reading while you're stretching or doing your mobility, start reciting what you read and start talking about what you read while you're doing the mobility and watch what happens to your retention. Uh, I, for me personally, it's like the most effective note taking I've ever done in my entire life. It's very, very effective at retaining information. Next question is from Eat Pretty Food. Would you say bar yoga Pilates would be the equivalent of a mobility or trigger session? How many times a week would you throw those types of classes in addition to training days? No, they're not. They're not equivalent. Um, so mobility and trigger sessions are targeted for particular goals and adaptations. Bar, yoga, and Pilates are, for example, if I did it, if I walked into a yoga class and I didn't know it was a yoga class, I could tell you it was a yoga class. I could tell you it was a Pilates class. I could tell you it was a bar class. There's a specific way of doing the movements, and there's a specific, um, you know, there's specific techniques and a specific it's structure. It's generic structure that you have to follow in order for it to fall under that umbrella or brand. So when you're doing bar, you're doing bar. When you're doing yoga, you're doing yoga. When you're doing Pilates, you're doing Pilates. Now, are you getting some benefits from them? Sure. From burning calories, can you potentially be increasing mobility? Yeah, moving. Yes, but it's very specific to those classes, so it is not equivalent. Now, mobility. And trigger sessions should be individualized to you, which makes them superior mm-hmm. in many, many different ways. If I'm if I just put together a general mobility class and I named it, you know, Sal Mobility or whatever, then that would be more like yoga or Pilates, where you come in and you take my class and right. you follow or, even, you even if, well, or even if it was Sal's trigger, same thing. Yeah, but right. they were they're exercises that you picked that you're dictating what they do that day where 
triggering and mobility, the way we've designed all the maps programs is that this is the customizable part. This is the part where you should have Prime or Prime Pro. You should do a test on you. You should see your imbalances. You should see your weaknesses, the things that could potentially be causing aches and pains in your body. You should know what those are. You should get to the root cause. And then your mobility and your trigger sessions should be structured around that. And you just can't do that in any class setting. No. no. And, and how I look at like structured classes like that, you're getting better at the skills to perform movements that they just, you know, have as like standards within their, their practice mm-hmm. and in their class. So it's like, yeah, I can do that move, but you know, what is that doing for my body in terms of like, um, you know, if I'm compensating my way to get to the specific move. You, you know what I think of it's like? It's like diets. It's just like diets. And it's the same thing that we teach people like when you follow a ketogenic diet or the paleo diet or the vegan diet. It's not the fucking diet that made you feel so good. So the, I know there's people that are listening that are like, I take bar and I feel amazing. It's not fucking bar that made you feel that way. There was something in that, in that class that you needed, that your body was being neglected and it just happened to graze over it so you feel great. The better answer is let's figure that let's out. Let's hone in on let's that. Let's unpack that. Let's yeah. figure out what is it in those classes that does make you feel better and let's start to incorporate that into your lifestyle or your your training regimen. The same thing is with dieting. People attach themselves to these fucking, I hate this. What I hate about fitness, they, they get. They want to put everybody in a box. Oh, I'm Pilates. Oh, I'm Yaga. Oh, I'm Bar. Oh, well, this is better than this. It's like, no, there's something to take from all of them. There are some good, but they are very generic. And so if you go to one of these classes and you see benefit, don't say it's because of bar or yoga or Pilates. Figure out what it is yeah, about that. What specific that. Uh, uh, exercise was right. it? Right. Nail is, it down. What is it? And yeah, because there's, there's a lot of people that yoga would be terrible for them. Well, and this or, is- or, you know what I mean? Like, and that's, you know, and I know you're here, you hear us saying mobility and trigger sessions are superior, but it's not because mobility and trigger sessions are a class. It's because the you can individualize them or you should individualize them to your body. So anything that is individualized to your body is going to be superior to something that is designed uh, around a structure for a class or for the masses. So, Well, if you're doing mobility correctly, you're going to address each individual joint's function specifically. Okay. And now like, so we're talking about broad strokes versus like very small, like specific strokes. And so like mobility, we're going to be able to see like, does my neck move, you know, the way it should, does my shoulders are they supported in, in range of motion in all these different directions? Are my knees, my hips, you know, my ankles, like, like I'm specifically like directing my focus on whatever the discrepancy is. And so I'm trying to unpack that and figure that out versus like, I'm just trying to go through this to, uh, get a certain feeling after I'm done. And everybody's trying to promote, you know, specific moves that everybody's doing in the class. This is why everybody I talk to, man, I plead. Okay. If you're a listener of mind pump or you have one of our programs or none of our programs, if you do not have prime, you have to have prime. Buy the fucking program. There's a 30 day money back guarantee because that what we did in there, in my opinion, is the most important piece to everything else that we've done because in there comes the assessment. And if there's anything that's going to help you get closer to figuring out what your body specifically needs and building an individual program, around it, even maps, even maps, what, like maps red, maps green, maps black, there is definitely a generic piece to it. We just took, we aggregated all the information that we had from the thousands of clients we've trained over the last 15, 20 years. And we agreed that this is going to give the biggest bang for the buck for a majority of all people. Does that mean that everybody's going to have? No, it still is not individualized. The closest you can get to individualize that is by taking like the compass test inside a prime and seeing what's going on with your body and then learning how to address it and integrate it into one of the programs. Now, now to be clear, uh, does this mean that we think taking these classes is bad? No. No, not at all. They have their own benefit. Obviously, you're being active. Classes have a benefit that individual training doesn't have, which is the- It's like community. Yep. You're connecting with other people. Which you got to share though what you think is the average person, okay, in your experience that goes and takes those classes. The average person yeah. that takes those classes? That dr- are drawn to those classes. Why are they drawn to those classes? Well, I think there's a, there's a factor of motivation. I think, you know, doing it on your own is, I mean, statistically speaking, much more difficult to stay consistent. Most than, people are scared. And, right. I mean, when it's you daunting. take a class, when you take a learn. class, you know, they tell you what to do. You've got other people around you. And there's benefits to working out with other people. There's benefits to the enjoyment of it. There's benefits to the connections that you make. And those classes, if done properly, can definitely benefit your health, especially in comparison to being 
sedentary. But if you're, you cannot comp- compare them to individualized type mobility or trigger sessions or workouts because there is nothing general that will ever be as good for you as something that is designed uh, specifically for you. Now, the second part of the question was, how many times a week would you throw those types of classes in addition to training days? Well, if you're working out two or three days a week individualized, like in the gym, and you want to throw yoga or Pilates or bar on top of it, and you're relatively fit, I mean, another two days a week of doing those classes should be absolutely fine. But be careful and manage your intensity. So if you're doing heavy, hard workouts in the gym on your own three days a week, then you may want to take a lower intensity yoga class the other times rather than doing these power yoga classes where you're pushing it even harder on your days off or doing like a spin class, which I think is another. I think that's an excellent point. I think it's also important to know too then like I am very pro with, and I've told clients that I think need like a very low intensity type yoga because I'm looking at the meditative benefits sure. for that person. So I could totally see somebody incorporating that once or twice a week in their routine because they, they got a high stress job. They're already kicking their ass inside the gym on the routine that I have them doing. So going and doing yoga for me, I don't want it to be intense. I want it to actually be a time they can actually kind of decompress, get into some good stretches, meditate a little bit, get in some good headspace. So I see huge benefits to that. But if you're going there for the, the, the sad part is most of these, these group type classes, they market themselves differently. You know, they market themselves that, you know, elongating your, elongating your muscles or, you know, lean in tone. Yeah. And they use terms like this to make people, and you see they have images of these women that have, they're lean and sexy, but they're not muscular and bulky, you know, and so people are drawn to that and then they feel comfortable because it's in a class setting. If, if you are drawn for those reasons, it's the wrong reasons. Now, if you're going to yoga because it is your, your time to yourself, and it works for you like that. And if you didn't have it scheduled, I respect that. Mm-hmm. Like I think there's, I think there's a lot of value to that. But bar and Pilates is pretty fucking intense, dude. Oh, dude, uh, yeah. yoga is too. I mean, I've it taken, I've taken some pretty tough yoga. Even even the yin ones where you're on the floor and you're just stretching, especially if you're tight, uh, and if you're a type A person. So this maybe not for yeah. everybody, but for yeah. me, sitting in a quiet room with quiet music sitting in a stretch and like be just being there with my thoughts was very difficult at times because yeah. I just wanted to get up and like throw something. You know what I mean? So, and I see lots of benefit of them, but individualized, always going to be better than class setting. Always. Next is from you Weber 18. Would you rather be extremely out of shape, aesthetically and really healthy or really good looking and always getting sick, poor energy, etc., for the rest of your life? <laughs> Isn't that, you know what's what? funny about this question? Oh, God. What's funny about this question is- Subconsciously, people make that decision They all do, the time. and I guarantee you it's a young person asking this because- <laughs> Yeah. Because this should never even be a question. Now, would, would it suck to be, to look terrible, but be really, really healthy? Yeah, there'd be a part of it that sucks because you're like, man, I'm really healthy, and yet I look like I'm not, but it do, that wouldn't, if it, anybody's it, ever not, had poor health, let me tell you. Yeah, but let, you get to back up a little bit because what you just said, you I know you don't agree with that. If you were really healthy, you would look good. I, this is it's a hypothetical yeah. question, right? Right, you're right, you're right, right, right. Let's be honest. If you were really healthy, you would look pretty damn good. Yeah. Now, I think the better question is like you know, because uh, I I could never be really healthy and look like what I look like on stage. So if I was attached to, or if I was still driven by my insecurities that got me into the gym, which is wanting to be this big bulky guy and be muscular, then I could see myself sacrificing my health for a look, hundred mm. percent. And I and I think if you do make that decision, I think there's there's deeper things that are going on than actually. You know what? That, that, that's true because really the question is: Would you rather be healthy and look good, or look good and be unhealthy? Because there is no be healthy and look bad. Right. That kind of doesn't really exist. Now you may not look, you not be, may not be healthy and be like you know Baywatch model or a bodybuilder, but you're not going to look terrible. You're still going to look pretty good. But you're right. I mean, people make this trade all the time. And I'll tell you what, for anybody who's ever experienced real poor health, you would trade anything for you would trade all your money for that. Look at all the wealthy people that spend their half their fortune on trying to get their health back. Like your health is not worth anything. Your poor health changes how you think and how you view the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, how do you, Adam, right now you're you can't move, right? Your ankles hurt, you can't move, and you don't even have necessarily poor health. But you've been forced, right, to right. reduce your activity. How challenging is that on everything? 
Oh no, it's it's I'm battling depression right now. I'm literally it's that it's that challenging for me because it's debil- it's debilitating for me. I cannot I can't like overcome it physically. So I have to imp- I have to put in this this mental discipline of sure in the past I could eat these types of foods and still keep myself in incredible shape. I don't even have that option anymore. That's really depressing. That's really tough. And it makes me really appreciate just the ability to walk because I've already had countless days since the last 6 weeks where I'm like Fuck, man, it's a beautiful day. I wish I could just go walk my boys. Mm. I wish I could just go out for a nice hour walk. And I know that that would help me so much in so many ways. I would get sunshine. I would burn extra calories. I would feel better more. And I can't even do that. I would kill to do just to have that back, which I can't wait to just to be able to go on for a, an hour walk or a hike. You don't you don't realize that until it's taken away right. from you. Once it's taken away from you, then it gives a whole... Which So that's the positive side, right? So here I'm saying I'm battling depression. The way I stay positive is like, I, I, I get, I'm like, I always learn something more about myself and it gives me new perspective on things when you can't, you know, like, well, I just wouldn't have thought not being able to walk around. I wouldn't have thought that, you know, being forced to sit down. Now I'm just more appreciative for that. I bet you when I get back into the swing of things, those simple walks and things like that, I'll have a different perspective totally. as, as I'm walking around. Totally. I mean, I had my own health issues, you know, I've talked about many times, uh, you know, about, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe. And, you know, when that happened to me now, I have a total different appreciation for good health or just for, you know, and what I mean by good health is like, yes, there's optimal health, but there's also health where you don't have major health issues. Like that's, that's a terrible way to live and it's not worth anything. And people who are willing to trade is their health for their, for aesthetics have no, the, the only reason why they're willing to make that trade it's because they don't know what they're trading. They have no fucking idea. They really don't. Like, mm. you know, you talk to somebody who has lung cancer after smoking cigarettes for, for years, and you ask them, was it worth it? And I guarantee you, probably all of them would be like, no, man, that totally wasn't worth it. Mm. You talk to somebody who has had, you know, heart surgery or, you know, is limited, can't play with their grandkids or whatever, you know, was it worth that life of, you know, poor health. I had, I'll never forget this. I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned these people before, but I'll do it again. I had this lady come in once who uh, hired me as a uh, personal trainer. She comes in and she's pretty obese. She had about 80, po- 80 pounds to lose. So she comes in, she wanted an orientation. Uh, I sit her down and I start talking to her about her goals, like, like you're supposed to do when you're a trainer. And she tells me how her and her husband Uh, got married young. I think they were like 19 years old and they started a trucking business. And their goal was to retire before the age of 50. So they were like, we're going to bust our ass, work as hard as we can, sacrifice everything so that we can make enough money to retire and travel the world. And they did. They retired at the age of, I think it was like 47, like real young. Like they made all this money with this trucking company, busted their asses, retired, had this money, fucking dude dies of a heart attack like months afterwards and so now here she is with me sitting down you know retired on her own poor health of her own now she had some of her own health problems like diabetes and a couple other things she's on all this medication and i'm talking to her about it and we had this real long deep conversation and she goes you know what she goes if i could go back in time i'd tell myself it none of the none of it was worth it at all like i wish i could I, I wish I could work until I'm 75, but be healthy rather than doing what we did. And it's just people don't know what they're trading mm-hmm. when they do these things. And unfortunately, in fitness, on the extreme levels, with the bodybuilding, with the anabolic hormones, with the fat burners, with the crazy diets, with the girls that starve the fuck out of themselves. Yeah, the message is that that's the healthy standard. And, and what they don't realize is, uh, n- number one, it's, it's all false anyway. So while you're pushing all that shit and you are trying to accomplish this aesthetic ideal by, by hammering your body and har- harming yourself, number one, you never achieve whatever happiness you think you're going to get. I have yet to meet <laughs> a person who does all these crazy drugs and stuff for their yeah. body who's a truly happy person. I haven't found one. They're all... There's a lot of issues and problems going on there. Well, momentarily, maybe they get to that goal and they're they're on stage and they're like on top of the world. But now, how do they maintain that? It's 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 not really. If you don't have like other stuff in your life going on, it's you're chasing something that you'll never get. It's fleeting. even if you get the look that you want. But then the worst part about that is when your health starts to rebel on you, which mm-hmm. it will at some point if you push it hard enough. You continue that path long enough. 
very few people can get away with it. Adam, me and Adam were talking about this yesterday. We were talking about uh, there's a particular individual that we know who's been taking, you know, anabolics high doses since he was in high school, just for a long ass time. Mm -hmm. And me and him were talking about, it, and we're like, you know, it's weird that. It's true, very few people, so there are some people that can get away with this shit for longer than others, because I couldn't get away with certain things for, for, for so long. Right before I got to 30, my body said, fuck you, and I had to make a choice, and you know, I know people who get to 40 who keep doing this, and, but at some point, your body's going to gonna, gonna give you the finger, and then you're going to realize what you were really trading. You know what I mean? It's like you sign a deal with the devil almost, where you ever watch the movies where the guy signs the thing and doesn't realize what he's actually getting. You know, there was a movie I watched a long time where this guy, like, he missed, he missed hitting a ball to to win the game in high school, and his wish was go back in time and hit that and make a home run, and it changes his life, and then he's a millionaire and he's got this hot model, and yeah, then he totally then she like cheats on him. Well, he just misses shit. his old life and his yeah. kids and all this other stuff, and you know, you don't know what you're you don't know what you're trading. This is not a trade you ever want to make, and the good news is, if you go, if you chase health, you're gonna get a good deal of aesthetics. That's the good news. So right, right. go yeah. for that. Agree. <clears throat> Next question is from Joe Pushner. Do you think our world, in particular the nutrition, wellness, active world, suffers from a lack of independent thinking? Hmm. I think it's getting better. <laughs> you know, I, one of the good things about being in, in fitness uh, professionally for 20 years and longer as a fan of fitness is I, I can see from a long perspective the changes that are happening. Because if I look at it right now, if I just get into it the last couple of years, I would say, yeah, this, it's totally lack of independent thinking. Everybody's parroting everybody. Yeah. But if I compare it to 15 years ago, oh, it's, it's a lot better. It's definitely got a lot better. And, and you know, the, the dilemma is that as professionals in the field, um, you know, you, you have to be able to sell yourself. You have to be able to sell your brand. You have to be able to sell your ideas. And I feel like it becomes this competitive environment to sway you in a direction of thinking that's very specific to um, whatever brand or ideals that that's that's portrayed. And so it 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 sort of tug of wars the consumer all over the place. And this is this is a really hard kind of thing that uh, we're trying to overcome and, and create sort of bridges across the board of like, okay, well, where's the truth within this direction? Where's the truth in that direction? And, you know, they, it, it always starts with, well, not always, but uh, most of the time, you know, a lot of these trains of thoughts and camps, you know, emerge because of truth. And there's some, some value there that uh, everybody can kind of extract. And then it just becomes like, well, we have to be different. Mm -hmm. And so we have to pull you in this direction Dude, and just ignore all that other stuff. 15 years ago, if you asked, you know, 100 people in fitness, what is a good diet for, you know, for health, fat loss, muscle building, whatever, the answer you would have gotten is uh, eat, you know, four to six meals a day. Eat uh, relatively low yeah, fat. Tilapia and yeah, asparagus. Uh, chicken breast is really good. Asparagus. It would be very general, and it would have been everybody would have said the same shit. Yeah, no salt. You know, today if you ask a hundred people, you're going to get a lot of different answers, and you're going to get some crossover answers. And the same is true with uh, with training. Like, you know, 15, 20 years ago, dudes that lifted like a bodybuilder didn't do anything else. Now, you still see that today, but I'm starting to see a little bit more mm -hmm. carry over to the other thing. So it's moving in a good direction, but it's still it's still boxes. You still see a lot of boxes. I, I, don't, I don't know if this will ever change. I think that uh, we lack independent thinking across the board on all industries. I don't think this is... Uh, just nutrition wellness i think and i and i i don't think it's all bad either right so i think i think part of evolution is that we take from something else that somebody did before us and then we build upon it right mm -hmm. i mean that's how we've evolved to where we are today and if everybody was independent thinkers would we ever be able to to progress that way you know everybody would be pulling in different directions <laughs> so i don't think the the lack of independent thinking is that bad of a thing i mean i'll be the first to admit that when i first got onto instagram i was I was modeling what I saw people having success with in my space. It wasn't my voice. It wasn't game changing. It wasn't independent thinking, but it was me trying to learn what this, how this all worked. And I remember kind of piecing that together. And then I feel like here we are three years later and I finally have kind of found my voice. And, and I feel like a lot of what mind pump 
says and talks about may seem like it's very independent thinking, but it's a it's a collaboration of many intelligent people that we've read or spoke to over the course of the last 15, 20 years. Now, we also live in a world today that uh, copycat is really fast and easy. Like It's different than what it was 20 years ago. Now, man, you could search somebody across the world that's doing something very similar to you, see what they're doing and copy paste and be doing the same thing. So, you know, we do lack that creativity sometimes. And I, and I do believe we see more of that, but I also think that also opens the doors for people like us because there's so many of these people just copycatting each other. Guys like us go like, Oh my God, so many of these people are copying the wrong things. So there's an opportunity for guys like us to come forward and be like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, let, let us tell you that it's not just like this, that there's actually more to this. And if these people that were telling you all this information actually trained and helped thousands of people, they would probably be able to, to tell you the same thing. But they're not because they're just parroting somebody else's bullshit that, that got passed to them. So I don't think it's such a bad thing. Mm. I think we, we as people, I think we have to learn to seek out more and new information. I think we need to understand that you always have to keep growing. Uh, I think you're either growing or dying. And so if you're not learning new information, you're not seeking more new stuff, I think then you are, you're already starting the process of dying. Mm-hmm. But I, I think some of the best things that you can learn when you train people for a long period of time, or, uh, for me, I can be, this is quite clear, The probably the best lesson that I learned from training and working with people in fitness for you know 20 years was just how shocking the variance could be from individual to individual. Like how different I was just gonna do. people could be when it came to how they responded to exercise, how they responded to nutrition, and how they respond and how I had to communicate to them as a trainer. Like it was, it was always it was so shocking that when I first became a trainer, I denied it. Like people would tell me things like, I don't know, Sal, I feel way better when I eat like this. And I'd be like, no, you don't. You don't know what you're talking about. That's not, you know, that's not good. Like I, I know that if you eat, you know, veganism, you're going to lack these nutrients. So that's not the way to eat. And I know that this is supposed to be healthy for you and you don't know what you feel. And little by little, I started listening to people and started to kind of break down what they're talking about. And it's, and you, of course, the science is all supporting it now that there are general things you can say. You know, there's general things I can say in terms of nutrition and exercise and activity. But when you get the individual in front of you, um, there's a big. I'll tell you what. Look, here's the thing. Like when you when you're looking at a chart of people, most people are somewhere in the middle. But then you, it kind of spreads out, and the further it spreads out from the middle, the bigger the variance is. You know, I had a client who. You know, he he came to me. He wanted to be. He was an anesthesiologist, very intelligent guy. Actually, one of the most intelligent guys. He at least probably listening to right right now. Give a shout out to Mike. He's one of the most intelligent guys I ever I ever trained. And he wanted to build muscle, wanted to get stronger. And he was a vegetarian. And me and him had this conversation about being a vegetarian. And I said, you know, uh, it'll probably be easier for you to build muscle if you had more meat, this and that and the other. And he says, and I said, tell me your story. Like, why are you vegetarian? And he says, oh, he goes, well, I went on this uh, charity trip where I was donating my services. And I don't remember where exactly it was. And he would do this every year. And they were in a region where the food, the culture of the region was where they fed them vegetarian. But it also involved lots of activity. They had to hike miles to get to these villages to perform these procedures uh, to help people. So he was eating a, a vegan kind of diet while he was doing all this crazy activity and travel. And he's like, the crazy thing is I was able, and he's and I wasn't in shape when I did it. And he goes, I had way more stamina, way more strength, and I just felt better. And then I came back to the US and I started eating meat again and I felt terrible. And he goes, and I've since done it several times and I've clearly made that, that distinction for myself that I feel better. Now he, of course, being an intelligent guy, presenting it to me in that way, knowing that, He's actually tested things and tried them out or whatever. I'm not going to argue with that. And I, he, he told me that and I said, well, shit, obviously it's working better for you and you're able to get stronger and be more fit as a result of it. So that's when I hear the independent thinking thing, what I'm thinking isn't necessarily a bunch of people creating their own whatever. What I see in fitness that's that, I, that I'm talking about is I see more people breaking out of the the mold a little bit like i see 
I'm starting to see people use kettlebells who aren't kettlebell specialists, or I start to see well because we're getting smarter. Power. We're building. We're building. Totally. We're building on we're previous more integrative. Yeah, we're 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 building on previous knowledge. I mean, yeah. I, I know that I'm intelligent because I know that I know nothing, and I think that I put that together really early on in my career because there was always an exception to the rule. There was never there was never there was never this solid truth to everything. There was always every time I thought for sure about something, it never failed me. I met a client that blew that fucking shattered my paradigm. Yep, yep. Yeah. And once you had that done enough times, you find like now when anybody tries to tell me anything, I'm like, okay, maybe. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe part of that, that works when you present it that way and it worked for those people that you talk about, but I bet I can find somebody who doesn't. And so, yeah. and I, I think too, like, that's why you don't, maybe you don't see it quite as often because it's really fucking hard to sell. It's really hard to sell the idea that like, you know, there, this may work beautifully for this type of a person or, you know, coming in versus, you know, somebody else and, you know, you individually, it's, it really is up to you to experience it and figure that out. And so like us as coaches and, and people in the industry, we have to come in with, you know, our past experience of what has worked, what hasn't worked, present it, allow, you know, the individual to experience it and then, you know, take notes, you know, internally and, and, you know, apply it, you know, what's applicable to you as the individual. Mm -hmm. So it's like, <laughs> you know, what do you, what do you call that? Well, a lot of it, the consumer's lazy, dude. The that's, that's the thing. The they consumer just want it laid out for them. Uh, Katrina was just asking me the other night. Because it like, takes work, dude. Right. It takes a lot of work. She was asking me the other night. She's all, how, how do you decide who you're going to help? Like at this point, so many people are asking for your help and information from you. Like, how do you know who to give help to and who not to? You know, and I say, I always put it back on that person. I can always tell if they're willing to, they care enough, they want to learn. Like they care enough to text me or DM me. Like that's not enough proof to me that this person is really genuinely cares. They, they're they just searching for the easy answer. And, yeah. and I'm not going to give them the easy answer. I never answer an answer straightforward. Like anybody who knows me, who's asked me a question, I never go this or that. Right. I always go, well, it could be this. It could be that. Yeah, it could be this. It depends. Yeah. You need to probably figure this out and work on this and do this and track that and do that. And I put a bunch of shit back on them. And if that person takes the time and effort to go put in all that hard work, then I know they care. Most people don't. Right. That's Most people don't. That's uh -huh. the that's the honest to God truth. Most fucking people do not nope. want, they, they are just looking for some generic answer. And I just refuse to do that. I refuse to give well, you- Well, you can't. How can you give an answer you don't know? You don't know. Right. No. How can, if somebody's telling me, Sal, with my diet- I could if I didn't have integrity, I just want to sell things. Right. Yeah. You know, if I wanted to just sell things, I'd say, oh, you, that's because you need our MAPS uh, green oh, And you're not doing it right. <laughs> oh, you, you, know, need, you need this. You just need that. You just need this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sell you all of our shit. But that's just not how how I work. You know, I'd much rather see if you're willing to put the work in and actually start to do some research on yourself. If you don't want to make that step, then I can't help you. Absolutely. Uh, so, Doug, when this airs, uh, Hit is live, right? So, Ooh. check this out. MAPS Hit. Hit them up. MAPS HIT is a high-intensity interval training program that we designed specifically to answer this following question that we get all the fucking time. Which program can I do that will burn maximum fat in a short period of time? Now, we didn't answer that before because we wanted to give people a good base, a good solid foundation with our other programs. But now that we've done that, we have MAPS HIT, which is easily the best fat-burning program we have. It's six weeks long. It's available right now. If you use the code HIT Launch, H I I T L A U N C H, you'll get $20 off the sale price and you'll get a free t shirt. You can find it at mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>